Welcome back to question two of this series where we use uranium lead dating to estimate the age of a rock. We ended off with the following question which reads, a rock contains lead 206 to uranium 238 mass ratio of 0 0.145 to 1.00. Assuming that the rock did not contain any lead at the time of its formation, determine the age of the rock. This question is actually very similar to question number one, but I will approach the solution differently here, where I'll show you a graph of what's happening as time goes on. The first thing that I want to do is write down the two formulas we used in question number one, and they are the half-life formula, which I'll represent as t half is equal to ln 2 over n, and the second formula, y is equal to a e to the power of negative nt. This is exponential decay, so we're using negative nt T represents the amount of years here, and that's what we're looking for. A represents the initial amount, and Y represents the final amount. N will be found by substituting the half-life of uranium, which we knew in question number one to be 4.5 times 10 to the power of nine. So we'll replace that right into there, and then isolate for N. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'll replace 4.5 times 10 to the power of nine years is equal to ln 2 over n, and n is equal to, let's use our calculator, ln 2, I'm assuming that you already know how to solve for n, and if you don't know how, just watch question number one, more details there, and we want to put this number in parentheses, so 4.5 times 10 to the power of 9, and we end up with an n value of 1.54032 times 10 to the power of negative 10. The units for this number are per one year. We now have the value for n. We need to now find the value for a. a represents the initial amount, and we're told that at the beginning of its formation, there was no lead. So if we look at this on a graph, let's create an xy plane here. So if x represents time, at the very beginning we have t is equal to zero. We have an unknown amount of uranium, and since it's exponentially decaying, the graph, or the amount of uranium, will take on this shape. Notice that it exponentially decays, and since we're talking about half-life here, it never actually disappears, even as time increases infinitely. On the other hand, no lead existed at the beginning, but eventually, it will have an inverse relationship to what you see in purple, where it will have an upper limit, but it'll never quite reach its upper limit. So we want to know how much uranium existed at the very beginning. And the way we do that is we use the molar mass of lead and the amount that's found in the rock when the observations were made. So we have 0 0.145, let's say that that's grams, to 1.00 grams. I'll write down 0 0.145 grams of lead times its molar mass, and molar mass is grams per mole. So we have 206, according to this number, one mole per 206 grams of lead. This unit and this unit will cancel out and we'll be left with the amount of moles of lead. And using the relationship that one mole of PB is equal to one mole of uranium, the units here and the units here will cancel out, leaving us with the amount of moles of uranium. And then we'll multiply this number by the molar mass of uranium, which is 238 grams per mole. So 238 grams per every one mole of uranium. Watch, this will cancel out, and now if we calculate this, we'll find the mass of uranium. This will represent the mass of uranium needed to form 0 0.145 grams of lead. So 0 0.145, multiply to all the numbers at the top, 238, divided by all the numbers at the bottom. And the only number at the bottom that's worth mentioning is 206 because the rest are ones. And this number is the amount of uranium needed to form 0 0.145 grams of lead. 0 0.167, and we'll leave this to three significant figures, but I'll write a few more numbers just so that I don't run into any rounding errors. I don't want to round just yet. So that's grams of uranium needed to form 0 0.145 
grams of lead. So going back to this formula, we now have the initial amount. It's this number, 0 0.167, plus the initial amount, which is 1 gram. What we have left is 1.00 grams of uranium. 1.00. Let me substitute all the information here. 1.00 is equal to the sum of these two numbers. So 1.167, and remember this is two significant figures after the decimal place, times e raised to the power of negative this number, 1.54032 times 10 to the power of negative 10. Multiply to what we're looking for, t. We can now solve for t. I'll divide both sides by 1.167. That will get rid of that number on the right side. And we get this now on the left side. So imagine this number being on the left side of this equation is equal to e to the power of the this expression. So let me write this down for clarity. Now to solve for t, we will lawn both sides because lawning the right side will cancel out these two. And this number will be on the bottom here. So let's lawn this number and we get the following, it's a negative number, divided by this number. And make sure that it's in parentheses, otherwise your calculator will not register the right number. And we end up with a t value of 1.00, and let's count how many numbers after that first decimal place, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 1.00, we want this to three significant figures, times 10 to the power of 9 years. And if you compare this to the half-life, the numbers do add up and they make sense. And there you have it. That is how to use uranium lead dating to estimate the age of a rock.